hello everyone thank you for stopping on my channel i am planning to create a short course on task scheduling in windows using GUI as well as then we will move on to a powershell scripts where we will create scripts that will schedule tasks based on different events and different scenarios yeah so that is what we are going to do in this uh, series and this is going to be the past video so we are going to take a look at the task scheduler and uh, we will see how we can schedule a task with task scheduler so what i'm writing right host um, let's say ps1 task scheduling course so let's just jump in i'm gonna open up the task scheduler and we got to open that with the administrative privileges and here we are so we have some built-in not built-in but some of the application that i'm running on this machine are using task scheduling to like update something or to execute some task and here you can see browse software and microsoft edge um, most of these software are using the task scheduler to like um execute some task based on a specific time and here you can see we have the name we have the status some of them are already as well as some of them are disabled and then we have triggers these are the events some of them are scheduled on specific time as well as some are scheduled on events and here we have the next execution time for that like what is the time that this script is going to be this script or this task is going to be executed next and this is the last execution time and then uh, we have the last run result some of them might be throwing error and some of them are going to be like um, successfully executed as you can see here the operation completed successfully and this one is not executed yet and one thing you might find interesting here is like whenever the task is never executed this is going to be the last run time so here you can see 11:30. 1999 and whenever you see this make sure like you note that uh, this task is never executed before and whenever that is get executed the time will be updated to that specific time frame and then we have the author like who created this and some of them are created by applications and some of them are created by users and if you click on any specific task it's going to show the history uh, and more details about that specific task uh, let's say i am going to click on this one restart wls um, and if i go to history here we will find the complete history of the execution of this scheduled task and then we have settings uh, conditions and actions and different information we will see that later on but like this is the basic GUI and this is the basic uh, overview of how a task scheduler looks like on the side where you can see here uh, we can create a task basic task like the basic GUI like if I click on that um, let's just create a simple one uh, and see how it works so here you can see create a basic task uh, it asks for the name and description while on the other hand if I click on create a task this is going to be like like kind of advanced view then the basic task so we can use any of this like if i say let's say test task and why we uh, like schedule a task whenever we have to execute something uh, based on like something in the future no matter you are on the system or you are not on the system but whenever you schedule a task it's going to be executed based on the the time that you provide or the event or no matter what your schedule is it's going to be executed uh, on that uh, schedule time here we can provide some descriptions let's say this is my test task and uh, if i click next here we have different options like how i want this to get executed um, when i log in when computer starts these are like the basic uh, and we have the event as well you can see here uh, let's say you want to execute a task daily we will update this um later on like to see how this works but let's say i want to execute uh, on daily uh, here we have the uh, one time as well 
um, we can specify the one time like when this task get executed so currently it's 11 11 let's say we want to get this executed on 11 13 and uh, click next here we have different options do you want to send email you want to start a program let's say you want to start a program and here we have to provide the program so let's say we are all about for sure right we are for sure we are for sure guys so let's say i want to schedule a task that will execute a for sure script and that will do some task for me so let's say uh, let, here we have to pass the um, path to the PowerShell. So we are already in the system 32 uh, we, where the task scheduler is installed, right? The uh, Windows system 32 is the main directory where all the applications are installed in the Windows. So that is where the PowerShell is also installed. So we have to just like instead of passing the whole path, C colon backslash Windows system 32 uh, instruct that we can directly type the name because it's already in that directory so i'm going to write for uh, and it's going to start that and then here we have also we can choose the file so we can manually go to that uh, system 32 and select that but instead we we know that it's already in that directory so we're going to directly pass the name and here we have um, add arguments and then we have the start in options like uh, start in option uh, mean optional mean like uh, where which will be the directory where this the executable is going to be started um, it's optional we're not going to use that a lot um, but this one uh, at arguments this one is uh, like uh, useful for us to pass some commands or to like pass some arguments to the power ship so if i go to the this directory where i am c y t and ps1 and like let's try some commands that I want to execute using the task scheduler. Let's say I want to start a PowerShell and I'm gonna like pass a command flag dash command and here I can type any command that's going to execute that command. Let's say make directory with the name test dir or we can pass underscore dir and here you can see the directory is created in the current directory and uh, also we can pass um, like other commands. Uh, we can pass semicolon and then uh, we can pass another command let's say it already exists so uh, let's say i'm going to remove the test dir and execute let's say cls let's execute the script again here we have provided two commands right the first one is uh, make directory and then call semicolon and then execute the ls command so I think if I hit enter, you can see the make directory command also like shows the content, but now we provided the ls, that's why it shows that twice. So, also instead of like um, passing the semicolon like this, let me clear the screen. Now, uh, we can like if we have a lot of scripts inside here, we can like pass the curly braces, and here we can type a lot of commands that you want to execute, uh, like that will be passed to the command parameter and that will be executed uh, via PowerShell. So that is how we will execute the command in the scheduler as well. So if I come here, we have to pass the command flag, like we have command to execute, right? So I'm gonna type dash command and here we will type the command that you want to execute. Let's say I want to create a directory uh, inside the C colon slash YT slash, um, then we have PS1 directory, right? And here I want to create a directory with name, let's say, um, what should I name this? Let's say um, task underscore dir. This is going to be the name. So now this is going to like create that directory and like to make sure this is going to work, we can try that right here as well. So if I type powershell.exe and fast this command and hit enter, as you can see the directory is created so that is what we are going to achieve using the task scheduler i'm going to remove the directory we don't have any directory we have one uh, let's remove that and here i'm gonna click on next now we have the description in each and everything uh, and this is the command that gonna be executed so i'm gonna click on finish now we have the task um, added to the task scheduler and it also shows the next execution time but now it's uh, 11 16 the time is uh, gone so um, we have to set time that is like in the future so that it's gonna get executed so in order to update it I can directly double click on that 
and also we have the um, different options right here but, uh, click on by clicking on properties we, this is also going to be opened so I'm going to click uh, come to triggers now here we have one trigger right we added this uh, on time one time uh, like scheduled time that we provided during the creation of this we can add as many as you want as well as also we can edit the ed existing ones so let's say I want to execute this on um, 17 11 17 and let's say 10 seconds I'm going to click on ok ok right here and here it will show the next execution time and as you can see this is the next execution time and uh, currently it's like some seconds to go so now it should be executed and if I refresh here uh, as you can see that last execution time is gone and I think it's not executed here as you can see the time is still that one and we can see here the task is not executed yet so what is wrong we can see that in the history so if I come here we have two tasks two like histories here so if I look at this um, it's not executed let's take a look at this again double by double clicking it's going to open that uh, as we are creating directory in the C drive uh, we have to like make it uh, run with high highest privileges so and also here as you can see we have the configuration for window, uh, windows server 2008 but we have to set that to windows 10 and also we can like um, pass the hidden so that it's gonna it's not gonna pop up the powershell window that is also something that can be done also we have the ability to change the user on which um, this task is going to be executed we can choose administrator but also this uh, the is as a user is also in the administrator um, that is creating this task uh, so i'm going to click on ok and also we have to change the last execution time because we missed the that one so it's um, 11 18 i'm going to change it to 19 so that we can see how this is going to execute i'm going to go to trigger and here i'm going to change this to 18 and this is going to be like let's say this one uh, it's already 18 so i'm going to change this to something that's going to execute this and if i come here let's see oh oh we missed again so we, we are missing that because like we are setting the time that is very near in the future so let's say 20 this time I'm gonna double click on this come here and 20 and let's say 16 or 15 seconds click on ok and um, when talking about this here we can see the we can also like import and export task these are actually the XML uh, like XML files it's going to create that whenever you export this we will see that also uh, later on and here uh, we updated the task many times and we will see if that gets executed on that specific time and uh, here we can like directly execute this command we can like if it is already in running state we can end this we can disable it here you can see one is disabled uh, whenever a task is disabled it's not gonna execute it um, and whenever a process uh, like a task is in run state this mean like it is under execution uh, we can end that uh, task at that time we have the properties like just like uh, we open that on the double click uh, we can open that on for clicking by clicking on properties uh, we can delete a specific task that is also a possibility right here so if i refresh uh, let's see if it is executed not executed but if i let's say if i come here if the directory is not created uh, i can try that on like executing directly from here and you can see the uh, the state is now running and if it is completed then it will show that um, it's completed you can see here tasks triggered by user and action started and then completed in this uh, time and like we executed this manually and if we see here not le ls the directory is created 
um, but that's something we want to do with the scheduler not manually like not executing the tasks manually so let's see if I click on this I'm gonna go to properties and review the settings the problem with the task scheduler is like sometimes um, it's like missing the task that you scheduled maybe after one or two, uh, two minutes it's gonna execute that but in this case we have uh, scheduled a task on a specific time frame right so that's why it's not gonna execute it also the, the reason it's not going to executing uh, executing is here uh, you can see task the uh, starter task only if the uh, AC power is on and currently you can see I'm not on um, and like the charge is not plugged into the spa the laptop so I'm gonna disable that so that's gonna execute um, no matter the power is on the AC power is on or off so I'm gonna click on okay also we have to like reschedule it Th these are the things that you need to like keep in mind while scheduling a task uh, in a task scheduler in Windows um, so like here in the condition this was something that uh, again we messed up here we have other conditions like start the task only if the computer is idle for that specific time uh, here we have option for that in the trigger but we that is uh, something we will talk uh, later on about as well uh, and how we can automate that with the powershell script uh, in the settings we have other options like allow task to be run on demand run task as soon as possible after the task is missed like here um, like if the task is missed and the time is like gone the, the, the time on which we schedule that specific task is gone and the task is not executed then uh, run that immediately whenever like you figure that the task is not executed so uh, we uh, unchecked this um, checkbox like no matter the power is on or off execute a task and here we have other options as well like these are for specific scenarios right but for now we only want the task to be triggered on a specific time so I'm gonna come here what time is it it's uh, 23 so I'm gonna set to 24 on 10 seconds and click OK OK here and also in whenever there is like some error or uh, like warning it's on so getting displayed right here uh, so if I see here we have only the information right the information logs um, also if you see the logs being disabled uh, you make sure to check here and um, like if I click on this it's going to disable the logs and as you saw on the screen the PowerShell window the task has been executed and uh, like I was talking about this but the task got executed so whenever you don't see the history here make sure you enable that from here and if I ls here you can see the task is executed and the directory with that name is uh, created now we're not gonna like create a directory like we're not gonna schedule task for uh, creating directories uh, I mean, and also we're not gonna like uh, maybe but we're not gonna execute a task like on specific time just like one minute in the future or something like that but these are just an examples like what are the possibility with uh, task scheduler when you can execute a task and when uh, like you can schedule a task with the task scheduler in windows and if i come here to the history we will see that it's uh, completed again uh, and here in the last run time we will see the last execution time is the time that we like scheduled on successfully executed so now if i uh, that that is uh, like how we can uh, schedule a basic task in powershell we saw the two options right here and um, later on you are going to like do these things with uh, powershell so these were uh, this was just uh, like uh, introduction to this task scheduler and what is this all about so and also here in the details um before i wrap up uh, we can see the details about these the task scheduler like the task that we have scheduled if it is executed here you can see the task is successfully finished and this is the id and instant of uh, this is uh, i think the task ID for the backend is uh, for the backend stuffs, and this is the instant uh, instance of this task. This is the path. Um, you can see right here the name, and this is the user who executed this task. And if I scroll down, we have the complete information: which events were fired, and 
what information i mean the possible information about this task so that is uh, all about it see you in the next one where we will de discuss more about these task scheduler and how we can interact with this in powershell so thank you for watching stay tuned for the next one